here's a, a random take. I think that we have sort of turned the corner on inflation. And here's why I, I think this. Like, the thing that frustrates me so much with the Bank of Canada, so and I commented on this to someone, someone posted something about, uh, you know, rates maybe going to 8%, and which I don't think they're going to go there. Um, the Bank of Canada did absolutely nothing while, like, the horse was running out of the barn. Right? They did nothing. They were super slow to react. They made no changes. And now, so, like, when inflation was going up, they were super slow to act. They did nothing. But now... Inflation is slowing a little bit. It's still out of control. We're talking like from 9% to like 8.3 to 7.5 to like 7.1. Like, you know, we're we're slowly dragging this thing down. But what did they think was going to happen? That they would raise the rate and overnight inflation would go from record, you know, near 10% down to two, right? Like one small increase it takes a long, long, long time to trickle through all levels of the market. And the first thing to respond is the housing market. Like we've talked about how housing is a lagging indicator uh, from a, a valuation standpoint, but the overall market responds almost immediately. Mm-hmm. Like, look at what they did, you know, with this increase, even for this most latest one or two increases. As soon as they turned that dial, immediately like the faucet shut on the housing market. Like yeah. it has been a a collapse in volume now. I think we said it was six months in a row yeah. that housing volume uh, listing like has gone down. So that happened almost immediately. The second thing that happens is people stop ordering things. You know, I stop ordering stuff online. Um, companies start start uh, stop ordering product that they feel that they can sell, that ordering cycle shrinks up because they can't rely on future sales. But that takes a little bit of time as well, right? Because they're still filling their existing demand in the moment. They already have orders placed six months in advance, et cetera, et cetera. But now they know things are contracting. They know their ability to borrow on things that they want to buy and then resell uh, is getting limited. So that takes a while for ordering to slow down. Next, Profit slows down. So people are spending less money. There's less things being sold. So profit slows down. And then unemployment happens. Like it takes a long friggin' time for that to trickle through. And we've talked about this with unemployment. It doesn't happen. Like you don't show up one day and they're like, hey, inflation's up, interest rates up, you're fired. Right? Like you have a contract, it's been collectively bargained or what have you, or maybe you're on a a six month that, that can't be terminated, or maybe just you know, your employer is trying to weather this storm. Unemployment doesn't happen right away. But the effects of the interest rate today will go through the economy for the next 6, 9, 12, potentially even 18 months. So we don't actually know if the interest rate today um, is enough to curb inflation. I actually think if we just froze right here and let the process unfold, we would continue to see inflation come down. But they're not having any patience, which is ironic because they did nothing before. They just waited and waited and waited. And now they're turning the knob every single month as if what like magically it's going to stop things overnight. It doesn't work that way. I think they could ride this out and what's going to happen, and they've now been pretty open about it, saying like, we're going to have unemployment, we're going to have a recession, that is going to be the cost of this, which means you're going to bear the brunt of it. People, everyday people are going to be unemployed. That's that's how this has to happen. But I think we're already at a point where if they just did nothing more, they're probably already there because they've broken the housing system and now they're going to try to break the, you know, complete all of the, the consumer industry and then break employment. So I don't disagree with you at all. Uh, everything I think is, is true. I just don't think that like I, I think they know exactly what they're doing. Like I, I, this is something they are forcing a recession. Like the big business, big investing, big money. Well, no, but this is just the start of it. Like they're they're gonna go to a point where it's like general, like actual hurt in the marketplaces. But that will come. I think if they do nothing more and just let the the fruits of what they've done come to harvest. Like we would well, already have this probably. recession with what's here now, but they're going to continue to turn the screws. I think excessively for no reason. Like we're already there. The uh, market already is acting like we're already there. But I think you're you're thinking like, like like they're doing it to a point to take control of the market. I I think they're doing it to literally force it into the gutter to allow the opportunity. Like on like a big big financial scale, like big money. I'm a true believer of like this is a completely forced to the point where like it's going to be collapses, it's going to wipe out 
like small and financial institutions. It'll wipe out a lot of small time investors. Like, like it's designed to literally drive Why? people down because it provides opportunities for big businesses to like every time you see this out of this coming out of this you will see the banks like you said before they're going to profit immensely huge corporations are going to profit immensely it's going to allow them to reposition make the changes they need to make uh, establish new business sectors that they want to establish buy up stuff at, at hugely discounted rates like it's so an this is your your, your back end conspiracy this stuff, is my yeah. back end conspiracy stuff but that like but it, it, it kind of like it, it checks out when you look at like over history that's always what's happened though like yeah, it is 100%. You, you think, to what you're saying, like you do not think that the economists that, that are a, poor, a part of this, that are making the decisions to crank these rates up, aren't forecasting and understanding that w- the AI alone, like the computer technology available today, could run a model that will simulate what's going to happen with the rates probably to like a 97% accuracy level, if not higher. And so they can probably run and see if they froze rates today where things would level out. And I agree with you. I think things would yeah. level out, if not even dip a bit, like a fair bit, actually. And so I think them continuing to dial it up yeah. is just pushing that dip further. Like, I think they know exactly what they're doing. I, I don't think this is like a, like they portray this thing of like, okay, we're like, we're trying this and that. And like, we're seeing how it goes. But this is not 1935 anymore, where it's all newspaper based. And like, we got to test the market, see what's happening. This is like, they have so much data, technology and control and understanding of what's going on. They can forecast. They can project. They can yeah. see. This is a this is a decided thing that is taking place, and it's, so, it's learning to weather it and run through it. What's so frustrating then is then people aren't mad enough because they go up there and they go, "Oh, it's just not working yet. We need to do it more." When actual understanding of markets, you know, shows us that it takes time. So them saying up that there is, is knowingly saying something that's misleading, and people are just like, "Oh yeah, it it sucks. It's too bad." Uh, but they, under the guise of like, we need to do this. This is our tough medicine, you know, to get this inflation down. People are like, well, you know, it is what it is because I need to get prices down on my stuff. But they also are being a bit lied to, I feel, by the Bank of Canada. 100%. This is this is kind of a side project and a bit of a digression. But like, this is part of the reason I wanted to do this. This is also part of the reason why I always loved YouTube. Because to me, it felt like a, a truthful space where people like that's where I learned a lot about my interest in finance and I learned a lot of things regarding real estate and banking and and all that kind of stuff that it's not necessarily the exact educated way but it's an interesting take where people are able to share their opinions and, and logic versus I found the general media that like the news the tv based stuff is so controlled that they don't tell you anything that's outside of the standardized norm um I sound like a crazy conspiracy saying this but like that's part of the reason that like a lot of these podcasts are so good because it's people who are like have a general understanding of it are in the weeds of things that can explain it like their take on what's taking place and so i i don't know i think that's part of the reason why i wanted to do this um and part of the reason i think i've i've listened to a lot of people that on podcasts and youtube because it's like a more realistic perspective based on what i think is like all the facts versus what what the news and the media that presents to majority of the population is not media and facts like we spoke with somebody today that's going to come on later on the pod and she explained her side and she said the media presented it like this and it didn't make any sense it wasn't what i was saying to them and i'm a i'm, I'm i want to say i'm a victim of that too i've talked to the media and then they presented something that was very different than the conversation that we had and it was a very different tone and it's it's a mixture of clickbaity as well as kind of what they have to produce it's like tons of people who worked at the washington post there's articles about how uh, there was guys there that worked there that had made negative toned articles about Amazon years prior. And then Bezos bought Washington Post. Guess whose jobs disappeared? It was just by some weird fate that those guys ended up going missing. Or those same editors now make yeah. articles that are super Amazon positive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, now this episode is going to get this shadow banned is, sent, is, sent down to the bottom. Sh- this, that's <laughs> proof of concept. They're going to get shadow banned and put yeah, sent down yeah. the bottom. It's well, another conspiracy well, what's episode. What's really frustrating is, is it makes it hard to make financial decisions because you're like, well, all the economic drivers would indicate that we are at a rate where, like, you can kind of predict it. You're like, okay, by the end of the year, and this is what we're, we're thinking, like, all right, you know, the bank rate will be somewhere around 3.25 to 3.5 and uh, by the end of the year, and... and um, it was going to be a bit higher than that, but not not a crazy amount higher than that. Yeah. Um, but that would do the following. It would break the housing market, mm-hmm. which it has. Mm-hmm. Um, the markets would get crushed, which they have. You'd wipe out a significant amount of, it, of it net worth. It slowed the housing market, and it's it's depreciated the market, I would say. It hasn't broken. Okay. It, it, it's... 
I, I don't know what you call like six months of contraction. Like, you know, that, that that's pretty fractional. People losing their houses. Okay. I don't think the measure should be people losing the houses. If people lose, you know, 15 to 20% of the equity in their house, totally. that, that is a collapse. That's huge. Right? And, and we talked about how it's it's over a trillion of household um, net massive. worth loss. I'm not so just the size. I just mean like... You would think, rationally, and from an economic perspective and, and all that good stuff, that that would suffice, mm -hmm. and they would let that bear out because that would be the correct thing to do. And then they don't do that, which makes you think, well, how am I supposed to make any financial decisions if the rules kind of don't apply, if common sense doesn't apply, and if there's no checks and balances and you get Neil's train of thought, which is like there's something going on behind the scenes. It's, it's very, very frustrating. But uh, we're getting long. I, like we got to save we, some room. We've for gone our off on the side, here. but I think I think this is part of. I think and some people comment if you if you disagree or or agree. But I think some people listen to this and all sorts of other sources of media for the simple fact that they don't necessarily trust 100 percent what gets presented to them in the standard form media. And I, you know what I mean? Like I think they're trying to get an alternative perspective and an alternative opinion. They're trying to create their formulate their own idea through getting a lot of opinions. And I think the value and why the general grassroots concepts like YouTube and Spotify, podcast, Apple Podcasts, all of those have grown so much is because people are hearing the, the truth. And not necessarily truth, yeah. a different perspective that isn't something that has maybe as manipulated. Yeah. But well, anyways, long story short, to answer it, that's why I yeah. think that they know exactly what they're doing with the rates. And I think it's, to what you're saying, I think... They, I agree with you. I think we've gotten past the hump. If it's starting to go down and it's consistently gone down, unemployment unemployment's starting to go up, the housing market is slow. Like I think we're at a point where they could cool off the rate hikes and things would go totally fine. Like it, it would definitely still beat people up a lot. There would still be lots of carnage over the next year. But it, it, and it would, would slowly bring down inflation. It would slowly bring down inflation and it would eventually regulate things and it wouldn't be a, like a massive fall off. But I think they're going to keep going until it is a massive fall off, and that is intentional. Yeah, scary stuff. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. <laughs> um, when, when, when I was broke, I had rich habits. Uh. When I was broke, I had rich habits. Uh.